Welcome back. Thanks for joining us for the final portion of this class on leadership with purpose and personal leadership. Now that you understand the process of personal development and your identity in Christ, which includes your unique gifts and purpose for God's kingdom, we want to encourage you to recognize where you're at on the maturity continuum and your next step to move from where you're at to the next level. Personal leadership requires a continual process of evaluating, developing, and applying what you have learned. In the first video, we discussed the seven habits of highly effective people and the maturity continuum to grow from dependence through the three habits for personal success and growth to independence, which are number one, be proactive as opposed to reactive. reactive. Uh -huh. Number two, start with the end in mind. And number three, put first things first or learn how to prioritize uh, your life and time. These three habits have to do with managing yourself and they guide you from dependence to independence and private mm -hmm. victory, which helps you develop character. The character earned through private victory and personal development, development must succeed public victory and leadership. Mm -hmm. David was able to defeat Goliath. That thus, was a public victory. Public victory. Mm -hmm. And but remember, before that he had he had defeated the lion and the bear. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a private, private victory. Private victory. Yeah. You can't skip this process, just like you can't harvest without first planting. Mm -hmm. Growth from dependence to independence is the seed that will produce a harvest of interdependence, healthy leadership, and public victories, which are enjoyed through cooperation with others, teamwork, good communication, and by developing the following three habits of win-win, everybody wins, Seek first to understand and then be understood and synergy. As we mentioned in the first video, you can learn more about these habits by reading the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Steve Covey. Uh, you can also find videos uh, of the Seven Habits on YouTube uh, and the PDF of the book is available online in Spanish and possibly in English as well. Mm -hmm. Once you know your purpose, it's also important to understand the things necessary to purpose. Mm -hmm. Things like work, some relationships or activities mm -hmm. that are required in order to reach or fulfill your purpose. For example, if you are a pastor of a church, your purpose is to make disciples. Mm -hmm. Things necessary to purpose might be administrative tasks, mm -hmm. sermon preparation, caring for a building, overseeing worship or children's ministry, et cetera. All, all those things could really get you bogged down to where you miss the purpose of miss making disciples. Purpose, making disciples yeah. <clears throat> In your work, church, and life, are you spending more time on your purpose or things necessary to purpose? Mm -hmm. If we are careful, the things necessary to purpose can begin to take up the majority of our time and energy, leaving the purpose neglected or even abandoned. Yes, your responsibility it's not to help every person or meet every need uh, presented. Mm -hmm. If you are people oriented or an extrovert like me, and you focus too much on people and neglect important tasks, or if you are empathetic, you may be tempted to take responsibilities that are not yours and miss your purpose. Or if you're highly creative or talented in a specific area, you may be tempted to create or do something that is a great idea, but not a God idea and miss your purpose. You must have a warrior mentality and fight against the demands of things that you are not called to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The devil will plant obstacles or distractions, weeds on the way to your harvest. Mm -hmm. Be aware of the serpents in your garden. Your responsibility is to partner with God in the care of your own garden or life. The capacity to self-manage begins with capacity to self-monitor and check yourself when emotions are running high. Mm -hmm. And also recognize whether emotions are being triggered from this present circumstance mm -hmm. or possibly from past hurts that are unprocessed or unhealed. You know, there's an anonymous but powerful quote that says, if you don't heal what hurt you, you will bleed on people who didn't cut you. Very good. And it's true. So true. Healthy leaders do not take 
out past pain on people or situations in the present. Mm -hmm. They learn to recognize and deal with hurts and offense and forgive. We talk about forgiveness some of in the coffee and dessert portion of the last class on communications and connections. Yeah, forgiveness is super important. important. You know, it's something we can use almost daily. Yeah, It's often helpful to do a periodic evaluation of how you're doing with the health of your spirit, soul, body, and relationships to determine if you might need to refuel, redirect, or renew. Mm -hmm. Do you need to seek emotional or functional support from outside to not only avoid mistakes, but to grow as a leader? Good leaders will open themselves up to outside input and counsel from wise and reliable sources. They will engage in ongoing process of personal healing and growth. Mm -hmm. The seventh habit of highly effective people is sharpen the soul. This means continue to develop and grow personally and as a leader. Do periodic evaluations about how you're doing in each of the five areas of vital signs, spirit, Mm -hmm soul, body, relationships, and leadership with purpose. Yeah, ask yourself, how am I doing emotionally? How am I doing relationally? And how am I doing spiritually? We'll teach you how to do a checkup and maintain health in the last class. Stay obedient and submissive to the voice of God and mentors and take responsibility for the purpose and people He, God, have given to you to lead. You know, we can learn from Jesus who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross. He knew that dying on the cross was the reason he was born. It was his early purpose for God's kingdom. And he accomplished it by uh, doing what he heard and saw the fathers do. Yeah. In John 5.30, Jesus explains how he fulfilled his unique purpose. It says, I'm able to do nothing from myself, independently of my own accord, but only as I'm taught by God and as I get His orders. Mm -hmm. Even as I hear, I judge. I decide as I am bidden to decide. As the voice comes to me, I give a decision, and my judgment is right because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire Mm -hmm. to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. Amen. The example of Jesus was here, and obey. Mm-hmm. Hear and obey. Just like Jesus, we can keep our focus on God's eternal kingdom purposes. And Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and source of our faith, and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and completion. The health and effectivity of our leadership or interdependence mm-hmm stems from the health of our spirit, soul, and body, or independence, which is dependent on our relationship to and dependence on God. The goal we establish for our journey or this journey is mm-hmm. daily, embrace the full majesty of Christ, learning to enter into His presence in order to be transformed to His image and reflect His glory, power, and kingdom to the world. Or to and the as world. our spirit daily embraces the full majesty of Christ, learning to enter into his presence, yes. then our soul and body will be transformed will. into his image and we will reflect his glory, power and kingdom to the world through our relationships mm-hmm. and leadership with purpose. Amen.